Hello, I'm Alison Woodhead, the manager of the Oxfam International Grow Campaign. Today the campaign includes more than 50 countries, all working together towards the same goal of ensuring everybody always has enough to eat. As the climate grows increasingly unsafe and as competition for natural resources gets fiercer, we know that it's getting tougher, tougher for the poorest people in the world to feed their families. So what you do in West Africa and in other parts of the world, what your colleagues and partners are doing in other parts of Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Latin America, in North America, in Australia, really matters. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you on this opening day of your West Africa Steering Committee meeting. This is a really important moment for the Grow Campaign because in January next year we're going to be finalising the framework for the campaign for 2016-19. to 19. As you know we've been consulting with all Grow countries and affiliates and we'll draw on that rich information to agree the global campaign framework. We've made good progress, but there's still more to do, in particular on the public campaign side, so the ways that we engage ordinary people around the world. So your meeting comes at a really good time. The West Africa regional team and country teams have always been GROW pioneers, and I've been really impressed with the way that you've used the full campaign toolbox, from policy papers and lobbying on the right to food, to engaging the public by working with famous musicians, video competitions for young people, the collaboration with the now famous Kudu de Faso Food Fair, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and by mounting mass petitions like the one that raised two million signatures for the Where's My 10% campaign. Of course there's been lots of inspiring work in other parts of the world as well, including winning legislation to protect the right to food in Peru and India, supporting community land rights struggles across Latin America and in parts of Africa and campaigning in Europe, North America, Brazil and Cambodia amongst other places to change the way the biggest food companies do business. GROW has always been different to other Oxfam campaigns. From the start it was conceived as a way to build movements. Oxfam's the convener but the campaign is only as strong as the relationships that we have with others. We're working with literally hundreds of organisations and networks around the world, including farmers' organisations, community land struggles, networks of rural women, INGOs working on social and environmental justice, youth movements, food movements and many others. And we're also a very diverse campaign. So in the South, people are campaigning on defending family farming, increasing investment in agriculture, asserting people's right to food, building people's resilience um, and protecting natural resources. And in the north we're campaigning for more political action on climate change and against vested private sector interests in food and fuel. And at times we come together as one campaign. So the People's Climate March that just happened in September in New York saw 400,000 ordinary people take to the streets with solidarity events in about 162 other countries. It was all about climate change, but it was all about the way that people experience climate change in their own lives, which was different in different places. But the really important thing for us was that Oxfam was at the heart of that. So our diversity can be a great strength, but it can also be a challenge because I think it can dilute our impact. So you no, know, I think that's that's something to think about during your meeting and I think that sometimes we are just better when we act together. The GROW campaign is both an online and an offline campaign and in many countries we're making really impressive use of mobile technology and social media to engage our targets and our publics. And we're also doing traditional grassroots mobilisation and a huge amount of direct advocacy, so it's a bit of both. And it's really important that we keep that mix of offline and online influencing and that we keep up with the opportunities that technology offers us as a campaign. So what happens next? Well, in 2015, we'll continue with much of our current great campaigning, South and North, but we will have a particular focus on climate change because of the opportunity that's presented by the Paris COP at the end of the year, both in terms of the political space that opens, but also the public space, as we saw in the rallies in New York and other countries. We'll work on both influencing the global political negotiations and national campaigning to increase people's resilience 
and will also build on that wave of public interest um, that we saw in the People's March. And then looking beyond next year to 2016 and beyond, we've recently completed a worldwide consultation about the future of GROW and some of you will have been um, a part of that consultation. We're likely to continue to have a broad advocacy agenda that's likely to look at three pillars, agriculture, land and climate change. And then within that broad advocacy agenda, we're just beginning to work out where we should seek to engage with public south on north on issues that really will resonate with them and make sense to them in their own lives. A number of other things emerged really strongly from the consultation, um, including the increasing importance of the private sector um, as a key player on food and sustainability, both south and north, and the importance of empowering women in the fight against hunger. There are some important internal shifts to take into account in, in your meeting. As you know, Oxfam is moving to become um, much more rooted in the south. There'll be a southern OI secretariat, more southern affiliates and simpler structures. Um, Oxfam is also increasingly focused on influencing. Um, that means challenging the powerful and making sustainable change happen that will benefit the poorest. Um, and then the other really important thing is that this year sees the launch of a new campaign on inequality. And there are many obvious links with the GROW campaign and I really encourage you to explore those links in this meeting. Some countries are worried that they'll have to choose between GROW and inequality and that is a risk, but I think there are also plenty of opportunities in those um, synergies between inequality and GROW as well. So, to conclude, during your meeting I think there are five things that I would really encourage you to consider. Firstly, think about the opportunity for influencing on climate change during 2015. And that doesn't just mean the international negotiations, it means what's happening at the national level. Um, secondly, discuss what issues present the greatest opportunities for change in your region in 2016 to 19, and how to engage publics to help you make that change happen. Thirdly, take into account the increasing influence of the private sector, which came through so strongly in the consultation. Fourthly, consider how to make women powerful in your plans. And fifthly, think about the links with the inequality campaign. I hope you have an enjoyable and productive meeting and I very much for look forward to seeing some of you in Bolivia at the Regions and Nations meeting um, at the end of November. Thanks again for inviting me and um, good luck.